By the time you've watched this video, Dan Snyder will have finally sold the Washington Commanders to a ownership group led by Josh Harris, Mitchell Rails, a local developer, and Magic Johnson. Yes, that Magic Johnson who played for the Lakers and owns part of the Dodgers, part of the Lakers, and innumerable amounts of other uh, businesses that have been very, very successful. And you're going to hear from everybody about how terrible Dan Snyder was, and we know all of that. You're going to hear from everybody about them. I'm going to take this tack. Josh Harris is experienced in sports ownership. Dev New Jersey Devils, Philadelphia 76ers, Crystal Palace Football Club. He's been largely successful in those ventures. Magic Johnson, as, as a person that's maybe not going to be prominent in terms of actually owning the club in terms of shares, but will be prominent in terms of the public face of the club. Hey, that's pretty good. Is such a win. I don't even know where to begin with that. But Mitchell Rails might be the most important person in this ownership group because Mitchell Rails is a person that is going to get the deal done for a new stadium. Whether it's in Virginia, Washington, D.C., or Maryland, and I believe it will be in Washington, D.C., and I hope that it will be in Washington, D.C. And so that's the key thing here is that finally, with Dan Snyder out of the picture, Washington can get out of that terrible stadium in Landover and get into a stadium that's better, that's not as big, and that hopefully will retain the home field advantage they once had when they were at RFK Stadium. And this is one thing I will say to the new owners. Do not be seduced by the idea of getting a Super Bowl in Washington and all that other stuff. That's not America! because that doesn't mean beans and it shouldn't mean beans to anyone. This is about getting to Super Bowls, not hosting one. Getting to them. And part of that is having a home field advantage which includes cold, inclement weather in January and February. So, don't build a dome stadium. Don't fall for that. Don't fall for that nonsense. Build an outdoor stadium that's going to be cold and uninviting to the visiting team sound like much fun to me if and when they come in late january for hopefully an nfc championship game or divisional game or even wild card game if you're in sarasota florida and hungry for the best pizza in town for the best price come to the new york slice company we're at the shopping center on veneva and fruitville over by the Publix, where you get good food from a down-to-earth family-owned pizza joint trying to get the best option forget about it no one in Florida is making you pizza this good for these low prices. Come on down and let us take care of you. Get two slices and a drink for four ninety nine. Hey, only in New York. Now, that's uh, that. That aside, let's talk about one of the more important repercussions of this deal, and that is not the effect it has on the commanders. That effect will be positive. It is the effect that it will have on another person who has gotten a free ride for the last 15 years because Dan Snyder's been so horrible, because Dan Snyder's been so incompetent, because Dan Snyder has been so criminal in his actions. It happened. That's an understatement. It ha it I was being nice, Chuckster. This person who owns two major franchises in, in Washington has got away with being a poor owner at best and an apathetic, awful owner at worst has nonetheless maladministered two major franchises that are located in Washington, D.C. And his free ride has got to be over. The time has got to be up on one Ted Leonsis. Yes, not not criminal or a thug or a bully or anything like that like Dan Snyder, but he's simply done a horrible job at owning the Washington Wizards and the Washington Capitals. The former AOL executive who now owns those two teams plus Capital One Arena, and the Ticketmaster operation that's out of there. The Taylor Swift debacle Ticketmaster? Uh, yes, that. Yes, that. Although I don't think that's got anything to do with him because that was that was some other place. I don't think that was Capital One Arena. That's all right. Anyway, Ted Leonsis is a very fortunate man because he's had Dan Snyder to draw the fans' ire for the last 15 years. He also somehow had Washington, the Washington Capitals, win a Stanley Cup in 2018, kind of out of nowhere. Fortunately, for you know, how fortunate you think it was, they managed to do it. Or he would maybe be getting the sort of, starting to get the sort of heat that he should have already been getting. And I just want to call back to people on 
Ted Leonsis. He first took over the Washington Capitals. One of the first things he did was sign off on the trade for Yarmir Yager. A trade that was an absolute disaster and an epic failure. And caused the Capitals to sink to the bottom of the NHL. As they had to rebuild and tear their team down and start over. And he was very fortunate. Because they were bad at the right time and got Alexander Ovechkin right before the first lockout. And then a couple of years later... Nicholas Backstrom, who probably should have gone one or two in that particular draft, slipped all the way to four and where Washington was drafting and they got him. Without those two events, the Washington Capitals are probably nowhere near the successful team they've been over the last decade, decade plus. And yes, they have been, he's built, they've built a consistent winner around those two guys. He's had some very good coaches and some, and George McPhee who did a decent job for a while, but he stuck with George McPhee too long left him in too long and George McPhee made maybe the worst trade in Washington sports history traded Philip Forsberg who turned out to be a superstar for Nashville and Washington fans who were hardcore hockey fans at the time knew Philip Forsberg was going to be great and and winced when he was traded at the deadline for Martin Erat to try and make the playoffs one year they didn't make the playoffs Philip Forsberg has since led Nashville to a Stanley Cup final that cost Washington probably at least two Stanley Cups, maybe more. So he left George McPhee in too long, and and, and, and that happened. He left Ernie Grunfeld in place in, in Washington way too long and let Ernie Grunfeld dine out on one really great trade, which was Karan Butler for Kwame Brown. Kwame Brown, God bless him, is a scrub. And, he, and, and Ernie Grunfeld made mistake after mistake after mistake in the draft trading away second round choices for cash and missing out on the on the ability to, to add depth wasted great talents that came to us like for instance John Wall who fell in our lap when we won the lottery uh, right after a Poland passed away and has continued to try to, to, to be behind a strategy in Washington of trying to make the play in which is ludicrous because making the play-in doesn't do anything for you. It's more of the treadmill of mediocrity in the NBA. In the NBA, you if you're going to be bad, don't halfway do it. Be as terrible as possible because you want enough ping-pong balls to win the lottery and get great players like the consensus number one draft pick in this year's NBA draft, Victor Wimbenyama. So instead of trading away Bradley Beal, which a sensible GM would have done, and of course... The reason we don't have a sensible GM is after Ernie Grunfeld was finally fired and after a very long pursuit of the brilliant Masai Ujiri, who ended up not coming to Washington even though he has ties to the area via via his, um, I think it's fiance, they settled on Ernie Grunfeld's assistant GM, who was in the room when he made all the, when Ernie Grunfeld made all the bad decisions he made. And this guy wouldn't trade Bradley Beal at the height of his value when his contract was about to run out and then compounded that by giving him a super max extension which is going to hamstring string this team for years he then makes a decent deal to get Chris Stapps Porzingis, that's alright and makes another decent deal to get Kyle Kuzma but again this team's going nowhere Kyle Kuzma should have been traded this year and he would have had a lot of value they didn't do it. Kyle Kuzma's probably going to walk for nothing this summer. And the Wizards, the fan base is so apathetic. The people aren't going to the games. And believe me, the Washington Capitals will head the same way as the Wizards. You mark my words. Once Alexander Ovechkin gets the goals record, and once he retires, the Capitals will be heading the same way because this owner does not know what he's doing and the people he's hired don't know what they're doing. And it is time for Washington fans to have turned their fire on Dan Snyder, low these 20 plus years he's been as the Washington Commanders and Redskins owner, to turn their fire on Ted Leonsis. He has got to go. These franchises haven't either been successful at all or haven't been as successful as they should be when they've had the opportunity because this guy has had people in place who weren't good enough to do the job. And he hasn't been willing, except for one time with Washington, with the Capitals, to really tear things down, rebuild, start over, 
and sell the, and sell the fans on a plan of hey. We tried something, it didn't work, we're going to start over and make it better. They did it once in Washington and did it successfully, to be fair. But now they're in a situation where they can't really do it because they have to wait. They have they can't trade Alexander Ovechkin because he's going for the goals record, and that would turn the fan base against the team forever. And he shouldn't do it, by the way. So they're going to be stuck in limbo, and then when he's gone, what's going to happen? And the Wizards had their moments, had their opportunities failed because the general manager did not know what he was doing and he still got kept in place. Coaches who weren't very good got kept in place much longer than they should. And now you have a fan base that is completely on the floor, that doesn't care, that that won't go to the games, that won't watch the games. This guy fired one of the best broadcast teams in the NBA, Steve Buckhans and Phil Chenier, one of the most popular broadcast teams in the NBA. One of the only reasons people would still watch Wizards basketball was to because those two guys were calling the games. He got rid of them for no good reason at all. There was no drop off in the quality of their calling. They had not, either one of them had not lost their fastball and this owner got rid of them for some reason. Wait, wait, wait. What, 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 what reason did he use? He just, he just decided he had enough. That was it. Never gave a reason, Lamar. Cost cutting. Uh, who knows? The point is, you get rid. Of, that ever since that decision was made, the TV ratings for the Washington Wizards locally in the floor, as low as you can possibly imagine, because they were. He was replaced by some guy who nobody knew who he was. Nobody knew where he came from. Sort of, you know, bog standard NBA announcer. Not very interesting. And what do you expect? And we've had a procession of, of, of color analysts, some of whom have been good. Carol Lawson was good, but she's now coaching Duke basketball, Duke women's basketball, so we don't have her anymore. But Drew Gooden wasn't very good at all. Karan Butler was all right. And... You know what? I've had it. This sucks. I just... I've had it with Ted Leonsis. And the city should have had it with him. And here's the other reason the fans need to turn their ire on him. It's gone quiet now, but the Washington Nationals are up for sale. And in the first burst of news about that, when there was in, when there was a lot of interest, Ted Leonsis emerged as the number one candidate to buy them. And if you think Ted Leonsis has done a bad job with the Caps and the Wizards, which I do, how do you think it's going to go with a baseball team? You freaking psychopath! Do you really want that man owning the baseball team, do, too? I don't, and nobody else should either. So Washington, D.C., to all my people in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, the DMV, it is time to turn your fire on Ted Leonsis. Time's got to be up for him. He has got to go. He is not a good owner. And he's fortunate that he's had a generational talent in Alexander Ovechkin and other really great talent, some of which fell in his lap, that's got him That's got him that one championship they do have and has him the admiration of hockey fans in Washington probably a little overrated for me at this point the admiration he deserves this hockey club is headed for the rocks as soon as alexander ovechkin retires it is believe me when i tell you this front office is not good they just fired another coach they've had two or they've had they're on three coaches now since they came in brian mcclellan and the rest of them and to me when you when you can't find a when you can't Find a good coach in three, then you're out the door. Because you're just as much the problem as the coach is. This is all my fault. Yes, it is. We've got to get rid of Ted Leonsis. Now is the time in Washington, D.C. So to, my, to anybody that sees this video living in that area, when the Dan Snyder thing is done, whenever that is, and it will be soon because the Brian Davis bid for $7 billion is a phantom. Don't buy it. Don't believe it. Sean Merriman tweeted out some great information about him. Brian Davis, don't believe that for a second. It's time for Ted to go. It is time for Ted to go. And we all got it and we all gotta pitch in and do it, just like we all pitched in to get rid of uh, Dan Snyder. Teamwork makes the dream work. Everybody pitched in on that, and it couldn't have happened without the fans, it couldn't have happened without the women who came forward. It couldn't happen without the women and the men behind the re the release of the report website it couldn't have happened without all of that we need the same effort here not because ted leonsis is a bad person or a criminal or a thug or a bully he's just simply terrible at being an owner and he's got to go
that is it for Roden Sports. Thank you for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, share it around. Spon sponsor us if you want. Email email my producer about that. He's always willing to take take your take your uh, emails on that. Thank you for watching. Until next time.